Welcome to Daily Overdose. Doing better isn't always easy. While it is impossible to do better if you don't know better, often we still know better than we do. But the problem is you just can't bring yourself to change course because of all the people that it would hurt for you to change. And how long will you make those people more important than your destiny? Well, the most important thing is self-esteem. The people that we read about, the people that we uh, admire, um, the Elon Musk's, the Steve Jobs, the Warren Buffett's, etc., all have one thing in common. They have extremely high self-esteem. The truth is, you will never win in life by being someone you are not. You cannot ever live the life of your dreams by settling for someone else's idea of what you should be doing with your life. You will never ever be happy if you change who you are to fit in with others. Until you accept and embrace who you are, you are destined to live a life at only a mere fraction of your potential. It is simply impossible to be genuinely happy when you are not genuinely yourself. You must be yourself if you want to experience your true purpose in life. Do you understand yourself and what you're trying to achieve? Are you in a place where you actually started the process of not worrying about what your parents or your friends or your spouse thinks about you? 87% of everybody that walks the face of the earth, 7.65 billion people are unhappy. Don't you understand? Don't you get it? You think Elon Musk wants to fit in? We know the answer is no, right? You want to fit in because you had poor role models at home. Most everybody in this room is a pleaser. You've been trained, keep your head down, don't embarrass yourself, don't embarrass the family, don't say things that may not happen. And I do just the opposite. I tell you to set goals beyond your lifetime. I, I tell you to set goals as soon as humanly possible. If you want to change, don't expect your life to stay the same. Expect it to get harder. Expect it to actually get really, really tough. Tougher than you can even imagine right now. And this is where you can move past the boundaries that used to hold you back. Used to hold you by the neck. Now you can move towards the fulfillment that's your future. And this, you see, this, this is where you can finally feel the satisfaction of your work. This is when you finally get to feel that success. Now is the time for you to step up, stand out, and become the person you need to become. Your future is in your hands, and this is what sets your life up to be worth the potential that you deserve. Your power is and always has been the thing that's going to take you towards the life that you have earned. Rule one is stand up straight with your shoulders back and it's about a general attitude towards life so hierarchies are very uh, stable features of of life in general and certainly of human life and wherever you have any system of values you have a hierarchy because a system of values implies that one thing is better than another if you have a situation where one thing is better than another, then some people are better at doing it than others, and you get a hierarchy. To stand up straight with your shoulders back is a literal injunction, but also a metaphorical injunction, because what you do when you stand up like that is you kind of expose the vulnerable surfaces of your body. Now, it's an act of courage. It's an act of, it's an act of taking on the voluntary responsibility of contending with hierarchical organization and uncertainty. And it's a very good, it's a good physical manifestation of the moral courage that's necessary to live life properly. And it's something that leaders naturally embody. And that's true not only of human beings, by the way, it's, it's also true of animals all the way down the biological chain. 
So the more successful creatures, let's say, are also those who comport themselves in an upright manner. And, you know, even in our common language, to be upright is not only something that we think about physically, but also morally, right? To be an upright person is to tell the truth and to act forthrightly and to do what you say you're going to do and all of those things. So that's all of a piece. And so that's rule one. Rule two, which is treat yourself like you're someone responsible for helping. That's an extension of rule one in some sense. The idea would be that you know, people are often ashamed and embarrassed and anxious because of their insufficiencies and failures and, and, and the incomplete nature of their characters and, and all the things they don't know and all of that. And so it's useful to, to um, develop and practice uh, an ethic of detached self-regard. Like it's not narcissism. It's not self-esteem, it's, 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 it's not grandiosity, it's none of that. It's just the clear realization that as other people have value and as it's necessary to treat them that way, if you want anything in your relationships whatsoever to go right, so it's also necessary to develop that attitude towards yourself, despite the knowledge you have of all your inadequacies. And that's a really good thing to practice because it requires practice, both the detachment and then that ethic of care. So, and then rule seven, which is do what is meaningful rather than what is expedient, that speaks to at what level of analysis you should be operating when you're deciding how to act. You wanna act in accordance with your highest values. Now that means you have to figure out what those values are. If you act in accordance with your highest values, sometimes that makes your day-to-day -day operations difficult because you have to confront unpleasant truths. You have to discuss things that you'd rather avoid. It would be easier to act to decrease conflict in the moment. But it's a very bad medium to long-term strategy. You have to engage in a certain amount of conflict moment to moment if you're going to say and do the things that are necessary in order to set things right in the medium to long term and for an increasingly large number of people. And that's also another guide to leadership, I would say. Nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble, we all have setbacks. If things go wrong, you hit a dead end, as you will. It's just life's way of saying, Time to change course. So ask every failure, this is what I do. Every failure, every crisis, every difficult time, I say, what is this here to teach me? And as soon as you get the lesson, you get to move on. If you really get the lesson, you pass and you don't have to repeat the class. If you don't get the lesson, it shows up wearing another pair of pants or skirt to give you some remedial work. And what I found is that difficulties come when you don't pay attention to life's whisper, because life always whispers to you first, first. And if you ignore the whisper sooner or later, you'll get a scream. Whatever you resist persists, but if you ask the right question, not why is this happening, but what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? It puts you in the place and space to get the lesson you need. My friend Eckhart Tolle, uh, who's written this wonderful book, uh, called A New Earth. It's all about letting the awareness of who you are stimulate everything that you do. He puts it like this. He says, don't react against a bad situation. Merge with that situation instead. And the solution will arise from the challenge. Because surrendering yourself doesn't mean giving up. It means acting with responsibility. Okay. Many of you know that, as President Hennessy said, I started this school in Africa. And I founded the school where I'm trying to give South African girls a shot at a future like yours, Stanford. And I spent five years making sure that school would be as beautiful as the students. I wanted every girl to feel her worth reflected in her surroundings. So I checked every blueprint.
Thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss another video.